Okay. I performed the other day at the Angel Club. I will say their name. And I was the only black person there, apart from actually one other brother, a uh, black guy. And he looked like he was in the film Get Out. He, he, <laughs> he looked so scared. <laughs> I was, I was like, you all right, brother? He was like, I can't talk. <laughs> I swear to God. He was, I was looking at him. His woman must have been like, I want a black man. And she got him and she was like, that's not the kind of black man I want. I want a Tyrone. I want the police to be called when they see me with him. I want someone to say to me, are you okay? Have you been kidnapped? But he was so, he was, I was like, you, brother, you I was, and then I just touched her over and okay, I am the only black person here, okay, yeah, and, you know, and, and I just address it, so I think at the beginning, I was very naive to it, you know, it's for comedy, it was comedy, you just make people laugh, and that's yeah, it, yeah. you know, so it's universal, it's not really, but then I started to realise. So you have to get involved in things that really aren't really part of the, you know, you don't really want to think about them as a comedian, you don't want to think about race, you don't want to think about it, you, you just want to transcend all of that and just be it's funny. Funny, yeah, that's, uh, when I started that, it was like, yeah, just, you know, talk about stuff, dating, and you know, just want to be funny, but as you grow into it, I think as you grow into who you are as a comedian, I now realise I have to address race, racism, discrimination, um, I've been told by agents, look, you're a woman, and a black woman, and a Caribbean black woman, uh, working class, some people are too frightened to book you. Some TV companies might be too nervous to book you because you can actually speak to the majority, whether they are white, Asian, it, it could be a white person that is working class, you're going to be able to hit them with something. You know, it could be an Asian person that is being discriminated. You know, there's so many different areas women it could be middle class white women but mm. they're women so i still can talk about things that they would face so i think it's a good thing if i'm in a room of a hundred people and everybody is white i'm just one black female you know i've come from a single parent home i'm working class i'm educated now um you know i'm a single parent myself it's all different it's, it's sometimes it's classism it's not necessarily racism and i can make everybody laugh they're, they're never going to forget that. People will forget what you said, but they will always remember how you made them feel. And we've got to be re real about it. It might be somebody that's met a black woman before and, you know, they 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 didn't have a great interaction, but that interaction they've had with me might change their perception. And I think that is what could bring people together. Sometimes racism is more about the unknown. You know, I'm not sure of what, what you people do. Mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, I'm a bit worried you know you're gonna cut me up and sell me like they're not sure it's what they've heard so when you kind of clarify of the things that they're not too sure about then they're like okay it's not like that